You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you into the Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale: Marion's Path. Um, I didn't notice this before. I don't know how I didn't notice this before, but Grace got the webbies and the scales going on. I did not notice that. Um, that's unusual. I don't see Jesse being any furrier or Mar I haven't gotten too far in Marion's path yet. Huh, interesting. Maybe they change depending on how far you're along in their journey. But I've got a really long save file for like, yeah, look, look at that. Yeah, still got my save file and everything for our, both these ladies. Anyway guys, let's jump right back into it. Today is the day of the big date, and I am interested to see where things go. Alright, here we go. Please enjoy. <clears throat> Alright. We roll the cask out, and that's the spout, and Marion pours out two tumblers of hard cider. Oop, one second. Okay, there we go. At long last we sit, as I balance the full glass in my hands. Cheers! Cheers! A glass is clink, and I take a long swig. A cider sweet tart burn calms everything inside me that has been aching, weary, and overly concerned about the importance of tonight's meal. Let us enjoy tonight. Agreed. Hmm. <laughs> We talk briefly on the weather, the harvest in our herds. Marion breaks the news that, indeed, my grandparents lost nearly a dozen cattle during the hard frost last winter. They must have been starving. The town has never seen such scarcity as it has over the past few years. I can only imagine. More accurately, I can sympathize. Hardship has affected us all in different ways, I can tell. Grand wears her determination proudly, but her cracks are starting to show. She's slowing down. Part of it is age, I know. But part of her spirit and part of her heart and spirit are broken down as well. Strife has eroded us all. Malcolm, your grandfather was always so kind to us. We were heartbroken to hear that he had passed. Every Sunday he brought us two loaves of sourdough, a jug of rye, and a slew of funny anecdotes that'd be too abashed to repeat. Suffice to say, he had many adventures at the Staganani. Jesse loved to see him coming. You know, I often cursed him for introducing my sister to the allure of pub life. But he was so easy to forgive. One wink of a blue eye and a lady's heart would melt. <laughs> he was a mischievous fellow, wasn't he? The most lovable devil, I have to admit. Once per month or so, he'd come by for tea. His heart was with us, and ours with him and your grandmother. Since he passed, I've seen her grow a bit more despondent each day since the funeral service. That seems so long ago now. She must cherish having you home. She does. Grandfather was her whole world, and I can't begin to replace that, but... Well, being home has taken on a new meaning to me. Hopefully it has to her as well. Oh, but it must. Just by being there, by taking over what she can't do, which is most everything outside the home, I'd imagine. That and being another heart to open up to on dark days. That's something that's irreplaceable. Something all of us need. I finish off my glass of cider and nod my head at the cask. Marion nods back and winks, and I help myself to another round. My face is flush. My inhibitions are leaving, and I'm building up courage. How about you? I finally address one elephant in the room. How are you doing? Have you been holding up in these past? Have you been holding up these past few years? We've not talked as friends in many moons. Marion refills her glass as well. That's tough to answer. She pauses to empty the glass in a long swallow and fill it once more before sitting down across from me. Her eyes are wide and contemplative. My heart aches at not being able to resolve her troubles. I'm not quite sure. I'm tired most of the time, and I get up early, fall asleep late in the night, and think too much, worry too much. I'm fine. I manage. I mean, I'm not sure I have the right to be anything but content. I'm productive and self-sufficient. I would call that successful, wouldn't you? I would, but are you happy? You have the right to be happy. I do. I know I do. I'm not happy every day, but that's fine. It plays second fiddle. I'm a mother first, a homemaker, the woman of the house. A mother? I've been raising my sisters since we were all small. Now they're young women, adults really, ones who don't much care for rules. With father gone, I have to play the role of both parents. Even though my sisters should be well past the age of needing them, yet they still demand so much doting and concern. I see how you would feel as though that's your duty. But you, but joy shouldn't elude you. You deserve as much care as they do. And words clearly catch her off guard as I too forward. Thank you, Malcolm. I appreciate hearing that, even if, well, I'm not sure how to respond. No need to. Just know that you are just as important as anyone you take care of. Her. The smooth cider helps the words slip from my tongue before I can stop them. Marion blushes, confirming to me that, yes, I was too forward. I quickly veer to a new topic. Do you think you'll stay Do you think you'll stay in Acta Craig? Others seem to be not just talking of leaving the village to go find work in the city, but actually acting on the decision, my parents included.
Marion shakes her head. Her hair is coming loose from a shig from a shig shignon shignon from a shignon, and whips fall across her cheeks and chin, grazing her freckled nose. She chews at the top lip while she chooses her words. Why would I go? To escape? To try to build a more manageable existence? Hard work follows you anywhere. There are no quick fixes or easy or easy escapes. No, city living is not just possible for me. It's just not possible for me. Now, Jessie, yes, she could do that. She would love to escape. Just ask her. She'll go on and on and on about it. She'll stick with the farm out here in the countryside. The grime I crave is from the topsoil and herd, not industrial progress. So I'm here, and here I shall stay. With grace. We're a pair, all right. Would you, Malcolm? Would you come to the city? Oh, I couldn't tell couldn't tell you right now. It certainly crossed my mind. But my thinking but my thinking skews closer to your logic. You can't outrun your troubles, no matter how far you travel. Parts of me parts of me thought I'd escape this village forever once I enlisted. But years of service lead me down a path right back into my childhood bedroom. Sometimes there's no predicting our future. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. You still remember your Sunday lessons? Too many. But the platitudes got me through, through many a weary and bleak night. The cloud seems lurking above as the, to as the talk feels so heavy. I don't know if my next question would lighten the mood or bother Marion further, but I'm too interested in response to, to hold back. My cider glass is empty once more, so I refill before asking. And you've never taken a husband? She, sp she, <laughs> she bat sputters out her drink. Oh, no, certainly no husband. I don't believe I've ever opened myself up to the idea, even. Once the last of the recruits were shipped overseas, the only man marrying age remaining was Bogaire. I can't help but laugh at the prospect, though somehow Marion is able to keep a straight face. Beloved as he is to the town, I could never imagine soiling his reputation by dragging him down the altar and making him the husband of a woman of no dowry or no blah of no dowry or particular beauty. She cracks a smile, which sends me into a renewed bout of laughter. She takes it takes a moment to catch my breath. Well, I can't speak to your inheritance. I would argue you or argue on your beauty, but I see your point. Marion turns red and keeps talking in a hushed tone as if sharing a secret. Although, Dougald Cranach, uh, the milliner's brother... Murdoch the milliner? Yes, his brother did try to court me once every other man had in town had left. At the time, he was older than my father, at least a decade older than even Bulgare. Uh, the poor chap is dead, God rest his soul. She giggles hysterically and gets quiet. So, I, I could be a widow. I suppose that would be a wee bit worse off than just being a spinster, eh? Hey, but old Murdoch's still alive and kicking. Should you need another proposal? We both share a hearty laugh, but I get the feeling she only jokes to stave off despair. She's at once effervescent and unhappy. I only wish I could offer her more solace. I mean, you can. Uh-oh. Oh, applesauce! The roast! <laughs> applesauce? <laughs> what? Oh, come on, girl. Marion dashes up off the chair and runs to the smoking pot on the hearth. A roast? Marion has truly gone all out. I wonder, I wonder at how she keeps juggling so much while staying so positive. <laughs> Silly girl. It's the fanciest spread I've seen in ages, even if it is a little burnt. In the Campbell household, only the most special occasions would justify a meal like this. My mouth waters. Uh, she'll be a teensy bit dry, uh, but we'll drown her in gravy. How's about? <laughs> that sounds delicious. So we dine on stringy roast and stark gravy, a bit of soda bread and even more cider alongside. The evening's conversation goes back to light and frothy. We touch upon more news and gossip. Mrs. Langham recently had a child, but rumor has it, Mr. Langham, who had been at the war well over nine months, is not the father. And we chat more about people we know who have yet to come back, and those who we know are not coming back. So much has changed that changes themselves are the most ready topic of conversation. Hmm. Oh, it's changing tonight. Ooh. Gonna get steamy. It's getting well into it's getting well into the evening now. The fire is freshly stoked and the lamps and candles around the room emit a comfy warm glow. All the food and cider in my belly are making me drowsy. Marion begins to delve deeper, but I don't believe I'm ready to share anything too intimate. How odd is it to be back? Hmm. Somewhat, I suppose. Hector Craig seems hollow. When I left, none of us would have guessed that my parents would find jobs in the city. There wasn't even a th there wasn't even a thought of such a thing. The real Scots Greys were my were my option out. I never thought about what the war would do to me, to my family. It's all different now, all of it, save my grandmother. It doesn't take much to disrupt normality, or to ruin your life, others' lives. True. 
I hate to admit it, when I received my father's note asking me to return home to tend to the farm and tend to grandmother, I was actually reluctant to come back. Why? Because I didn't know what, what I was coming back to. Your family? Your friends? Your questions tease out a deep emptiness inside me that I've been reluctant to acknowledge. It bubbles to the surface. My grandmother's my only family now, and she's not long for this world. As I see her fading, I see everything I have slipping away. My friends are mostly gone. I came back to loss. You came home to rebuild, and Malcolm... Marion reaches out across the table and takes one hand in hers. I feel foggy and lightheaded, and her gentle touch does little to ground me. Instead, it begins to send my head spinning. You have friends still. They're here. I'm here. I swallow and bleak hard to keep from choking up. Her sincerity is profound, and I would never doubt any word from her. I squeeze her hand, but let it go, and knowing the true meaning of the gesture beyond confirming her friendship. Thank you very much, Marion. I do cherish our renewed friendship, and yes, I did come back home to rebuild, and so I am, trying at least. I realize I'm fighting back tears, and move to another topic, still. What about your father? Will he be returning soon? Marion places her hand back into her lap, seemingly unfazed by my choice to let her hand go. He will. He got word for... We got word from him just a few days past. His regiment won't be back on Scottish soil for months, though. He must be relieved. And he's alive? Yes, that he's returning. Yes. She pauses with a distant look that speaks of conflicting emotions. Well, I don't know. You don't? Part of me wants him back, in hopes that when we reunite, our family will somehow become the model menage we, we never had. I still hold on to that dream, out of reach though it may be. But, Malcolm... We've been here on our own for so long now. As much as we should want our father back, we've... I've come to appreciate the freedom to make my own decisions. I understand. This little homestead's not big enough for two heads of a household. Hmm. Interesting. And I do understand. All too well. I'd react similarly if my parents made clear their intent to return. Much of my relief upon returning was knowing that they'd not be here to judge or criticize me. Since we're being honest, I would've... I'd be very disappointed if I knew my parents were coming back to town. You would? They abandoned me, my grandparents, life here. I wouldn't say my father did that. He abandoned you much early, didn't he? Such a thing to say. <laughs> the cider seems to have stripped away all of my inhibitions. Varian pouts, but smirks back at me, acknowledging that I've not stepped out of bounds of my with my paternal with my paternal appraisal. I reflect on my memories of Owen and his daughter's hesitancy to welcome him back becomes clearer. You can't act offended, Marion. I'm a friend, remember? An honest one. Owen was not just lacking a warm heart, he was a brandishing a cold soul, one that chilled everyone in his presence. It's a chill I felt within my own home, too, from my own parents. Silly cat. Being a silly kitty. You're not wrong, but he suffered so. I want to be able to forgive him those offenses. You all suffered once your mother passed. My parents didn't even have that excuse. My father but did the best he knew how. I just wasn't... I prepared to hear I just wasn't good enough, but Marion surprises me. I just wasn't what he needed to be around. How so? He needed to be in charge, but had no idea how to care for three daughters all alone. When I took on the role of mother, he retreated into the role of... Tyrant? Widower. It's as simple as that. He needed to mourn, and we all did the best we could. His ways just weren't effective. Recovering for him. And being his daughter! In short, Malcolm, no, I'm not waiting for his return. Wistfully standing by the seashore, keeping an eye out for his ship, and for that I feel equal parts shame and ambivalence. Ambivalence. <laughs> Again, I understand. Mm. Rain stirs food around on her plate, and I reach over to refill her tumbler for what is to be the last drink of the night. She gazes up, her eyes wet, looking almost of, looking almost of comfort or ease. Patience, it's all we can hope for. Thank you. I will try. I promise you. She dries her eyes, sighing heavily. We've been blessed enough to have Alana looking over us frequently, too. You remember Miss Alana, of course, from school days? I just about choke on my drink. The awkward conversation and nightmare are still both so recent and vivid. <laughs> Funny you mention it. As it happened, she paid me a visit last night. Ah, nice of her to welcome you home. Something like that. Less celebratory, more doom and gloom. Oh, that side of Alana. Yes, she she told me I should stay away. Well, that's a fine welcome. I swallow and take a deep breath. 
Or from you, specifically. Marion looks bewildered, but she doesn't skip a beat. Alona said that? Why? I thought you might know. I'm sorry, Marion. I don't mean to add another trouble to your basket. Oh, it sounds like Alana just being Alana. I wouldn't be that egregious. You came anyway, did you not? I did, and mostly unscathed. Marion laughs as I greatly exaggerate, stretching my sore arms. The dream is still fresh, and I am grateful my arms don't end in hooves. Alana must... Alana comes by from time to time. I can ask what's given her the fear, if you like. I doubt you would get a straight answer. No, I think it's best that we... I not upset her more. But is there any reason she would be worried about you and your sisters? Apart from being our own, we're hardly the only ones in that situation. And I admit, I've always questioned her motives. I understand the kindness of strangers, but when the strangers are... Strange? Huh! <laughs> You've noticed. It's hard to miss. Talking to her is like trying to solve a mysterious riddle. Always! I consider asking more, but I don't want to prolong the subject. I look out at the starry sky and realize I've monopolized a great deal of Marion's evening. I don't want to cut the night short, but I really ought to be back to Agnes and get to bed. I've already taken up so much of your time. I'm so grateful for you for sharing it, though. Oh, yes! I should follow suit and be getting to sleep as well. Early to bed, early to rise. Malcolm, thank you so much for coming over, for sharing this meal with me. It's been so long since I've shared a good conversation with anyone other than my sisters. For me as well, Marion. Your hospitality can't be topped. Out the window and across the fields, the McLeod's, the McLeod's cowherd stands silhouetted in the moonlight. The greys idly, unaware of how much effort it takes to tend after them. Marion must be constantly waist-deep in responsibilities. It's all I can do to not immediately offer my continued services and whatever help I can afford to, well, afford to provide. But there's much, but there's much to do that there's much to do at the Campbell homestead too. I'm just not sure if it's the right time to commit to assisting her. Can I keep up supporting two households with the daily chores? Uh, yeah. Uh, get, go get your woman, boy. Absolutely, it's a gentlemanly thing to do. Marion, again, if there's anything I can ever do that would relieve you of your daily, of some of your daily burdens, please let me know. I'm around to help not just Grant, but just but neighbors, friends as well. Oh, that's so kind of you. I may take you up on it from time to time. Many hands. <laughs> Make light work. I can't tell you how much this evening meant to me. A hot meal, a few drinks, are the very least I can give to you. Just hearing the voice of another person, one devoid of judgment, and full of welcoming good cheer, has left me more emotionally sated than I felt in, well, probably ever. This has been an evening I needed. A personal talk with someone who wants to get to know me, as a person, and I know there is much more I'd like to know about Marion as well. You've given me much more than that this evening, I assure you. <laughs> Wonderful night. Oh god, they're so cute together. <laughs> With that, I stand up, search for my coat, realize I won't find something I forgot to bring, I must brave the cold and covered. Oh, you've no coat. Please, take one of Father's. She pulls a long, boiled wool overcoat from the closet. Thank you, Marion. <laughs> I slip into the coat and head outside. The coat arms are too loose and long, but it will do. What a sweet gesture. Marion sees me to the door, and unconsciously I reach out and wrap her in my arms, pressing one hand firmly on her lower back and the other at her upper neck. Ooh. Mm hmm. I like that. She likes that, too. Thank you so much, Malcolm. Have a lovely night. Ooh, what's this? <laughs> oh, Malcolm putting the moves on Marion. I have stumbled home, in a haze of fondness and alcohol. I could not have dreamed of a more cathartic evening, nor a more kind-hearted soul as Marion. My rest that night comes fast and stays long. I wake remembering her freckles, as red as her blushing cheeks when she smiles. <laughs> oh. God, these two have such an adorable relationship. I can't wait to see how it progresses further. And we move on to the day. Yes. From the evening comes the day. All right, what do we got? I wake up, realizing I've slept in a bit later than usual. My body must have really needed it. Thankfully, this time my sleep was deep and nightmare-free. It's left me feeling refreshed and ready to tackle whatever the day will throw at me. And to my surprise, the first thing it throws at me is a, ch is a chiding grandmother. Good morning, sleepyhead. Goodness, why are you wearing those dirty rags? The working clothes I'm wearing are a bit faded and dusty, but compared to the mud-soaked khakis we wore in the trenches, they feel like pristine to tire. They're not that dirty, Gran. I'd hate to foul up a nicer outfit, but I've, I've got another hefty day of work in store. Not before you go to church, young man. The work can wait. Church? Is it Sunday already? 
Aye, and you best throw on a proper outfit and a flash if we're to make it to the sermon on time. Church, I can hardly remember the last time I went to a proper service. My time in the field had seen me quickly fall out of the routine. It wasn't for the lack of opportunity. There are plenty of chaplains around, even if what passed for church was just another dugout from a, with a cross nailed into the dirt. No one had lost my faith. It was just God felt so very far away from the front lines. Many of the other soldiers prayed, but I privately doubted he could hear them. But that was then. This is now. Sometimes turning a new leaf means returning to old practices, especially if it's important to Gran. All right, let me get changed. Good, good. I'll have our sandwiches ready for the road in a jiff. Back to church, Malcolm goes with another scene. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here with a big church scene. All righty. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Changeling Tell, Marion's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, read that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It's always appreciated. Until next time, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.